This is the room of Christopher Robin, and amongst his many stuffed animals, his favorite is a bear named Winnie the Pooh. Together, they've had many wonderful adventures here in the Hundred Acre Wood. Oh, hello, Pooh. Would you like to hear a story about a very special friend? Oh, special, you say. Special. Think, think, think. Why don't I just start the tale, shall I? Start the tale? What a wonderful idea. Indeed, Pooh, it is. In fact, it's a story all about you. When we first started, there would maybe have been a sense of apprehension uh, about um, jumping in and dealing with these classic characters. Is he still there? Oh, yes. He's still here. And I think he wants to stick with you. It was a daunting task to try to come up with a new version of Winnie the Pooh that would be relevant for today. And what we realized is that when you return to the Hundred Acre Woods, you don't want anything to have changed. You want to visit the same characters that you remember as a child. Pooh, I think we should start at the beginning. Is there honey at the beginning? Uh, well, I'm sure we'll find some along the way. Your story begins with your friend Christopher Robin. On his first birthday, his father, A. A. Milne, gave him a teddy bear. One day, Christopher visited London Zoo, where he saw a black bear named Winnie. When he returned home, he decided to name his teddy bear... Winnie the Pooh? That's right, Pooh, and that's how you got your name. Now, Christopher had a wonderful imagination and would create many adventures for you and your friends. His father joined in and later wrote up the stories for everyone to read. The very first appearance of Winnie the Pooh was on December the 24th, 1925, in one of the London newspapers as the first chapter of Winnie the Pooh appeared and the story was an immediate success. The first of the books was Winnie the Pooh, which came out in 1926, and the second was The House at Pooh Corner. And of course, many people wanted Milne to continue with a series of books, but he said, no, that's enough. When Christopher Robin begins school, Milne just felt the inspiration just wasn't there anymore. There's so much heart and charm in the Milne stories that I'm sure that that's the thing that really drew Walt Disney to these stories back in the 60s. Pooh, that brings us to the next chapter of your story. Uh, uh, Pooh Bear, what are you doing? Oh, just looking for a smackerel of something, of course. Silly old bear. One reason that Walt had been interested in Winnie the Pooh was that, in fact, his daughters had loved the Winnie the Pooh stories, and he had read the Winnie the Pooh stories to them, and he was, I think, very aware of just how powerful and how extraordinary they were. I think Walt recognized great characters, and great characters, great stories are sort of the foundation of what makes great animation. It also lends themselves really well to animation. I mean, these are stuffed animals that come to life in the imagination of a child. It's a great medium uh, to explore that in. It was initially going to be done as a feature, and uh, we had gotten about two thirds into it, and Walt said one day, he said, well, I want to take a look at, at what we've got, and afterwards, he came out, and I heard him say, you know, guys, he says, I think we should cut our losses on this. He says, I don't think the audience is really going to buy this kind of humor. It's very mild, very, very soft. And he says, so I think we should put it out as a featurette. So that's what we did. It went out as Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, and that was our first release. It did very well. So then we had all this extra footage left over that we hadn't used, so we went out and we uh, did Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day. And the Blustery Day won an Academy Award. So even Walt could be wrong when, when thinking that the public wouldn't buy that kind of humor. Now, Pooh, this is the part where we see how much you have changed. 
Is there honey in this part of it? Oh, sorry, Pooh. Um, no. Well then, I don't find them very useful. Well, perhaps you'll change your mind. You see, Pooh, you started off as Christopher Robin's teddy bear. Then, for your first adventure, you looked like this. Then this. And finally, this. We tried to uh, stay as close as we could to Shepard's drawings. So we basically tried to keep the same shapes and, and feel of the characters, but make it more adaptable to animation. You know, their feelings were that there were some, just some, some subtle little tweaks that needed to be done to really maximize the character's ability for performance and expression and acting, you know, to really, really hit those characters home. And now you have a brand new adventure. I do. Why, yes, Pooh Bear, you do. Bernie Mattinson's an animator here at the studio. He started in 1953. He's worn about as many hats as you can possibly wear here at, the, at Disney Animation. He is our sort of living link with Walt Disney. And in fact, he animated on the original Winnie the Pooh. So we felt like he had to work on this movie. The directors came to me and they asked me to do a beat board of the stories that they had picked. Everybody comes in and they all make suggestions as to what would make a good tale for Eeyore. We call him our Winnie the Pooh guru. It was great to have him on this project. Pooh, I have a surprise for you. I do like surprises. There is an actual 100-acre wood. There's a real place that the 100-acre wood is based on, and it's uh, Ashdown Forest in Sussex, England. When Milne wrote the books, it was natural to him that he would set it in a place that they so often visit in the summer. It's a very special place. It's, it, you know, there's a lot of forest. There's a lot of you know, beautiful vistas and views. We got to go for a few days and just walk around the 100-acre wood and see the place that inspired Milne and Shepard mostly, actually, too, because Shepard used to kind of just go out and hang out with the Milne family and just sketch and draw, and, and you, can, you can see it. I mean, when you're in the real place, it's like a one-to-one -one thing. You can see Shepard's actual illustrations that re really inspired him, so uh, that really inspired us. Winnie the Pooh is probably one of the most renowned characters in the world, most recognizable characters in the world, second only to Mickey Mouse. I think it's because he's so loved from many ages, from young to old. He's been around since the, the 20s, and you know, we're really certain he's gonna be around so far into the future, you know? He really is just a character that endures. Well, Pooh, you've certainly had some grand adventures, don't you think? Does that mean it's time to say goodbye? I was hoping it was time for something else. Uh, like what? A small smackerel of honey, perhaps? <laughs> ah, yes, some things never change. Pooh, you are one of a kind. For wherever there are children, there will always be a most enchanted place and many adventures ahead with an extraordinary little bear named Winnie the Pooh.